It feels like the job market is slowly getting better. One of the indicators is seeing more junior roles being advertised, like this one that I saw on LinkedIn the other day. That is a contract for £400 a day. Yes, for a junior. It's graduation season and a lot of people have finished their courses and are looking for their first job. It is important to be prepared as competitions for these jobs will be very high. In this video, I'm going to show you how to write a great resume when you have zero experience and help you get that job. Hi, my name is Chili, your UX design BFF, and welcome back to my channel. You guys loved my resume template video, but I kept getting questions about how to use this as a beginner who has no work experience. I'm going to show you how to structure and write an engaging resume by using the projects that you have done on your courses, along with any part-time work that you've done in the past or a role from a different sector for those who are switching careers. I will also be outlining common mistakes to avoid. This template can be applied to other job titles, not just UX. So if you're looking to get into software engineering, consultancy, accountancy, anything, it should work similarly, just adjust it to your job role. The way you structure your resume is important because recruiters may see your resume before they decide to look at your portfolio. I found a video on TikTok where someone did a resume experiment. He applied to 100 jobs with a resume full of nonsense and an offensive name, and he still got 29 interviews. And he wrote some insane things on that resume. He included stats like spreading STIs to 60% of the team, and he still got callbacks. At first glance, the resume looks great, but when you take a closer look, it is not so great. He's included arson as one of his skills, and he has successfully raised coffee break times by 300% at Amazon Dating, which is a fake company. I mean, I do not encourage you to add these things to your resume, but there is a very important lesson to be learned here. Good structure and data can take you very far. It's clear that the recruiters weren't really reading the details of the resume. They were probably skimming it for a few seconds and they saw good company names and good data points and they just assumed it was all good. In my previous resume video, I talked about the importance of using data to show up your skills and that experiment shows just how effective it is. We'll get more into the data a little bit later in the video. If you're creating your first portfolio and haven't had personal feedback on it, I have a video where I'm doing a live portfolio feedback session. It is very long, over an hour, but there is a lot of learning to take away. So if you're creating your first portfolio, definitely watch that video. You can play it on double speed. You can 10X your learning by seeing other people receive feedback. That's why courses and boot camps are so effective because you're learning from what other people are creating and the feedback that they get as well as your own. I will link that below, definitely watch that. And make sure you subscribe to get notified on the next live session I do. Now let's get into it. You want to make sure your resume is engaging so you stand out as a candidate, but it's also important to keep it simple so that it's easy to skim read very quickly as you only have a few seconds of the recruiter's attention. I will break down exactly how you do this. I've created a template to share with you guys. The link to the template is in the description below. And if you have signed up to my mailing list, it will be sent straight to your inbox. When you click on the link, this is what you're going to see. So you click on here and it will make a copy of the template. You have to be signed into Google Suites to be able to use this template. So this is what the template looks like. So in terms of the design of your resume, keep it simple, do not over design it. White background, black text. Some companies still print out resumes to read through. So you want to make sure it's simple. I know you're probably eager to show off your design skills, but this is not the time to do that yet. You will be able to do that in your portfolio. Some companies use automated systems to scan through the resume. So if you have too many designs, it will make it very difficult to read. So if you have something like this, something that's overly designed, when these automated systems called ATS systems, when they are scanning through your resume, sometimes they can't tell the different design sections. So it will be reading across. Just make sure you're keeping it simple for that. Any backgrounds or patterns can distract from the information, making it hard to read. Make sure you're using simple typography, no more than three styles. So here we've got one styles and one style for these like type two headings. Obviously the name is one heading, but everything else is basically the same size. So keep it simple. Personally, I don't believe you should put your photo on there, but that is a personal opinion and this may vary from country to country. So I will leave that one up to you. You can always put a picture of yourself on your portfolio. So when you export this resume, make sure you're exporting it as a PDF. Even if you're doing it on Word or any other text tool that you're using, make sure you're exporting it as a PDF so it's easy to put through these ATS systems. Okay, now let's get into the content. So the header, we're gonna keep it simple. You've got your name up here 
and you've got your title. On this side, you're gonna have some of your links and contact information. So portfolio, email, LinkedIn, and you can also add in social media links if they're related to design. So I, I sometimes put my YouTube link there. Make sure these are hyperlinked. Don't hyperlink your email. I personally find that quite annoying. I'd rather someone copy and paste it, but definitely hyperlink your portfolio and your LinkedIn profile. Don't include your address as you don't know where a copy of this might end up. You can put in your country and your city if you want to. So I would put London, UK. Next is your skills and expertise. Here you're going to list the core skills that you have that are relevant for the job. You can also find some of these listed in job descriptions. Make sure you're adding the ones that are relevant to you to your resume so that when the ATS system is scanning for them, it is a match. Be specific and use industry standard terminology. In the template, I have provided a list of some. Please add and delete as you see fit. Next, you're gonna have a little bit of a space and then we're gonna add some soft skills. This is where you can use skills that you may have that are not necessarily just about UX design. These are skills that will be needed for the job, but not UX design specific. So organization, sorry, this is UK versus US spelling. That's what's going on with the red. So um, coordination, critical thinking, problem solving, anything else that you find fit, you can also add it here. Next, you're gonna do programs and tools. So. As a UX designer, Figma, usertesting.com, Adobe Photoshop, Miro, Jira, or anything else that you feel like you're good at. List your skills out simply. Do not make a matrix like this, as it's very difficult to understand what like 80% or 70% of Adobe InDesign means. It makes people think that you're not that good at it, and how can you be 100% creative? So yeah, it doesn't really translate very well. Just list things out simply and that way it can be picked up by the ATS and it's easy to read. Next is your education. Normally your education goes last and your work experience goes first, but as you don't have much work experience, we're gonna put it first and we're gonna use key projects that you did on your course as your work experience. So you're gonna start with the years that you studied, the course, the place of studying, the university, and you're gonna have one or two bullet points just introducing the project that you wanna talk about this can be like maybe your final major project or the project that you're most proud of where you know that you made the most impact. And then we're gonna use some data. So you're gonna start by saying what you redesigned and any impact it created. I'll go a little bit more into details for this in a minute. And similar to maybe any other short courses you've done, you can talk about them. And if there was a key project, use the same structure. If there wasn't, just kind of talk about it a little bit. If there are any other degrees that you've done before that might not be relevant to UX design, just mention them, but don't add too many. For example, if you did any more short courses to do with like social work or accounting, you don't need to include those, but maybe your main degree in or a master's. So you're gonna show off your skills by using data. Normally what most people do here is just talk about, I did some user research, I did some UI design, I redesigned this, I redesigned that which is okay. However, if everyone just talks about what they did, it's hard to know who did it well. And UX designers are hired to create impact in the company using design. So you wanna just show off your skills in a way to show that you have a good grasp of user needs and your design solutions help to make change positively. And you do that by showing data and metrics. So where do you get these data and metrics? You can get these from your user test. At the beginning of your project, you have an idea of how bad the problem is, and then you're working towards a redesign to improve this experience. You need to have some sort of numbers or indicator to show how it was good. So at the beginning of the project, you will have some baseline data to justify why you're doing the project. For example, you could test a website and be like four out of five people were struggling to complete a task. Four out of five people, that's 80% were struggling to complete a task. And then after you redesign, you can then say how now four out of five people are completing the task successfully. That is a 60% increase on conversion or add to basket or however you want to say it. So you can say, I achieved a 60% increase in task completion by redesigning this landing page or by redesigning this user journey. And you can go a bit more into detail about what went on in this redesign, what the key insights you found in the research that helped you make these changes. 
So the key structure, which I will show you here, the key structure of all the data is I did A, which led to result B, or you can switch around by I achieved B by doing A. Sometimes while you're studying, you might get the odd live project here and there, and you can pop them in to your work experience. So here is an example of redesigning someone's baking website. Um, you can pop in the date, the name of the brand and your role in it. And again, you're gonna, we have one or two sentences about what this was, a baking website um, that had this and this trouble and then go into your impact. I redesigned this part, which resulted in a 60% conversion rate. I designed something and achieved a 20% edit basket. This is based on the design that already exists. If you are designing something from scratch, let's assume this person didn't have a website before. So obviously you can't say what's increased and what hasn't increased, which now means you don't have data to show what you can say is, I designed X, this website, which achieved a 20% add to basket in its first week of launch. That is also a great way, even though you, you didn't actually improve anything, this still shows that you are really good at understanding how data works. Or having a brand new website, you can say, I redesigned a website for a baking client, which resulted in two hours saved in admin work and led to an increase of 20% more bookings. So you don't need to have loads of data points per work experience. You only really need one, maybe two. Here I show an example of how you can use any previous work experience and make it relevant to UX design. So if you look at these points closely, these are core skills that UX designers need because ultimately UX design is about solving issues and driving business growth and profitability and creating good customer experience. So. Number one, work closely with customer service team to understand the needs and concerns of our customers and drive change. This led to a 20% decrease in complaints. Um, provided great customer service and proactively addressed complaints, which led to a customer satisfaction rate of 95%. Or you can say, which led to me continuously reaching my sales targets, because sometimes people have personal sales targets when they're working in these sort of roles or which led to me receiving sales assistant of the month award. I got that once when I worked at New Look. And here are some more examples. Provide great customer service, which contributed to the team consistently reaching sales targets. Because we know that some of these jobs have daily sales targets. And having the word consistently proves that your work directly impacts business revenue and business growth. Another one is constantly identifying and implementing improvements to streamline operations while working in the fitting room, which I did, uh, which ensured shorter waiting times for customers during busy periods. Or you can talk about how something you did, which led to less spillage in the bar and resulted in less waste. So again, how can you show that you're solving problems and creating good customer experience? And, and if you have any other jobs, just keep adding them on. Just copy and paste the structure and add these on. Make sure you, there's no more than two pages. So if you have loads of experience, make sure you're only elaborating on a few and keep the rest simple because you don't want it to get too long. So even though you don't have much UX design experience, this highlights that you're good at working collaboratively in a team, engaging with customers, understanding customer pain points and seeking problems to solve. And this contributes to business revenue and business success, which are key skills for a UX designer. If you have found this video useful, let me know in the comments below and help me out by hitting the like button. I have linked the template below and make sure you check out my other video on writing a resume. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.